need to try something. Okay, I've never combined these two techniques together before, so this is gonna be a fun little experiment that we can do together. I don't even know if it worked. Oh, it worked. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, we're adventuring in the mountains today. We are in Eastern Idaho and this is the Caribou National Forest and we are gonna be scouting for some fall color and we found the perfect place because this is actually called Scout Mountain. So really cool. I'm excited for what we might find and you can see behind me, we've got some nice light right now, but we're gonna take a quick break really quick and eat something, um, get fueled up for our adventure. And then we're gonna see what kind of fall color we can capture. I'm really excited to dig into this sandwich. Um, we stopped off at a really cute little cafe, coffee shop. It's a college town, so it's called College Market. Really fun place. They have pita sandwiches, yummy. So I'm gonna eat this really quick and then we're gonna go out see what we can find. pulling into the campground area, I noticed this really pretty colorful patch of fall color. I love this wooden fence kind of leading you up into there. Yeah, and some kind of redness in these, I don't know, brush here. Very pretty. And with the light on it. Okay, let's go see if we can find more. So it looks like They've got a lot of closed areas for construction. Um, don't want to mess with stuff behind there, but maybe if we kind of drive down kind of where we came from, there might be some color, maybe some views at that overlook. So let's head over there. to try something okay so I want to try something don't know if it'll work but kind of multiple exposure with this and intentional camera movement I have no idea if it'll work but I think that's the perfect opportunity to try it sounds good are these Aspen I noticed it when we were driving over to the overlook over there. I love the white trunks and then kind of the tufts of color on the top and like the wispy grass leading up to them. Mm. Isn't that cute? Very nice. So for anyone who doesn't know what multiple exposure is, um, it's something that I learned way back when, when I was learning photography on film. And it was literally like exposing the film twice. So we'd roll the roll of film into the camera, expose it, then roll it back, and then re-expose that roll. These are some examples of multiple exposure images I captured about 10 years ago. 
You can see where the light areas of one image are visible in the shadowy areas of the other. So it kind of makes a kind of ghostly effect. It's very cool. So we'll give it a try. Um, I talked about this feature in my um, video that we recorded in Idaho City several months ago. And I told you that I was gonna try it out and this is, this is it. So let's give it a go, shall we? So it's, it should be a lot easier in a digital camera than on film. So what you wanna do is go to the photo shooting menu, scroll almost to the bottom and select the multiple exposure feature. We're gonna select series so that we don't have to keep turning this on every time we shoot a photo. There are a few different variations you can play with in the settings, and you might find this information helpful. It's from a pocket guide I always have with me in the field. I'll leave a link below if you want to check it out, but I'm still learning the D850, and this little guy helps a ton when I'm out in the field and need to quickly look up what a button does or find a specific feature in the menu, so it's super handy. Now for intentional camera movement, it's exactly what it sounds like. You intentionally move your camera while you're pressing the shutter button to create kind of a blurred effect. And these are a few images I captured using this technique. And you can see it's a really fun way to get creative with your camera. Now, I've never combined these two techniques together before, the multiple exposure and the intentional camera movement. So this is gonna be a fun little experiment that we can do together. So first I'll take a crisp in focus shot using a smaller aperture to get deep depth of field and then a faster shutter speed so I can freeze any movement. And then I'm gonna slow the shutter down slightly so as I press the shutter button and move my camera up, it'll create that awesome blurring effect. Ooh, I don't know. That's kind of cool. I don't know, for my first try, <laughs> I don't even know if it worked. Oh, it worked. Okay, do you guys see? There are there's crisp. There are crisp places and then there is blurred. Oh my gosh. This That's is so cool. Fun. Guys, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> so try it. Next time you're out, try multiple exposure. Uh expose for a crisp shot and then intentional camera movement. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know I'm, if I'm getting too excited for one shot here, but. So here's the straight out of camera raw image with multiple exposure done in camera. And here I've done a few foundation edits to bring out the colors and more detail and things like that. And here's the final image with photo veils applied. I love how this turned out. For my first time practicing with these two techniques combined, I think it turned out great. So guys, we drove up really quick after Steve got off work tonight. So we're kind of racing the sun a little bit. It just peaked behind that mountain over there. But I think we got some really fun shots and I am super excited about that multiple exposure. I can't wait to check it out on the computer and see what we got. I think I'm gonna like it. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us tonight and until next time, get out there, get clicking, adventure awaits.